Hi, welcome to Claris Engage. I'm here today to talk to you about data and automation, the keys to the digital transformation, kingdom or queendom. I'm Heidi Porter with the Moyer Group. I'm a co-owner of the Moyer Group, and here's a bit about uh, my university background and my certifications. And then here's a bit about my hobbies pre-pandemic and during the pandemic. And I live in Michigan, right in the middle of the hand, which is how we like to designate our location in Michigan. Now, this is a survey or overview session of data and automation within digital transformation. And I really want you to leave with a deeper understanding of that and able to generate ideas to help your organizations digitally transform and operate better. Here's the agenda, what it is, what digital transformation is, and how data and automation fit in, and I'll show some scenarios and then some guidance at the end and some reference material. So let's get started. First, let's talk about what digital transformation is. Now, you might just be starting in your digital transformation or your client's digital transformation, or you might have some areas that are already very digital and you want to transform some more. You also might be very far along in your digital transformation and wanting to evolve for more continuous improvement. There's different levels of evolution and there's always room for improvement. Digital transformation means using digital technology to solve problems. And there are three main areas you might digitally transform. Starting with your internal organization, digitally transforming your internal processes, such as onboarding, supply chain management, getting relevant data from emails, invoice, inventory, or things like contracts. DocuSign is a good example of a digital tool to use for contract signing that can help your internal organization. You can also di digitally transform the customer experience or even just make it more intuitive and consistent. Think of Amazon, Netflix, any digital tool or app you as a consumer use. Calendly is a great digital tool for customers to use to schedule appointments with your business or your organization. And then there's an area that's been happening a lot amidst COVID-19. Changing your whole business model or creating a new business model, such as moving everything from in-person to online. And Shopify is an e-commerce software that allows you to do just that. Remember, it's usually a digital transformation evolution. Now, McKinsey just recently released a paper called Digital Strategy in a Time of Crisis because we are in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis. However, the message in this is timeless. What they found was how fast businesses accelerated transformation to survive reallocating resources quickly, capital, training people, using digital talent strategically across multiple areas, digital collaboration, productivity, e-commerce, digital payments. They did this because it was urgent to survive. This is useful to think about and the message is timeless because think about how it would have benefited these businesses or organizations if they had digitally transformed before the crisis if they had made it urgent, a priority to move forward on these initiatives. So why didn't they? Well, usually it's a combination of money, but no time, time, but no money, or some other indecision. And so, but think about in hindsight, how they wish they had moved earlier. So the message here is the time is now, whenever you're watching this, the time is now to digitally transform or evolve. So how do you make that happen? Well, when you look at what's involved, it's even more amazing how fast people, businesses, and organizations have transformed. Because the first thing to start with is people and the decisions and the buy-in by stakeholders, and then the change for everybody and the training as part of the digital transformation. And then the second, you need to get the data and get the data digitally accessible, get it in order. Data is key. You also need to look at your processes, revisit what works best, what are the problems, the big pain points, what can be solved and what should be created anew. This is where we get into our second of our keys, automation. Lastly is the technology. And FileMaker is well suited for digital transformation of data and process and automation. 
Technology is a tool for managing the data and implementing the process and automation to make digital transformation happen, which brings us back to the people who need to drive the implementation along with the change for their people and the training on that new technology. The keys are data and automation. Digitally transforming your paper or in-person processes means moving to digital data, managing your content, getting the right information and extracting it for applications as needed. That's data. Transforming your business processes to be more efficient means more digital automation, and automation has many meanings that we'll discuss. Even just synchronizing data across your company is a form of automation that benefits your business. And you can also automate data capture, things like barcode scanning, mobile photo captures, etc. Data and automation are the keys for people and technology to digitally transform your organization. So we talked about what digital transformation is in this module, and next we'll talk about how data is the key. So we talked about digital transformation and how data is a big part. But why? Well, data enables insights, operation and actions, and automation. But before you start thinking of the exciting things you can do or continue to do with your data, you need to get your data house in order. To digitally transform, you need a data strategy. Now, getting your data in order is not the exciting part of data and digital transformation, but you could think of it as the Marie Kondo piece. When your data is central, clean, and guided, it will spark more joy for your organization and customers. You need data that's central and accessible and clean. It's gone through a process of detecting or correcting and removing corrupt or inaccurate data. Your data also needs to be guided or governed to meet several goals, which we'll discuss. We'll see that FileMaker is well suited for this data strategy. For one thing, FileMaker works across multiple platforms and multiple devices. This facilitates data that is centralized and accessible. And one of the reasons this is so important is the concept of automating a single source for truth. This is a core value of transformation from paper-based to digital. Reporting, budgeting, forecasting are automatically updated and consistent, ac accurate, and in a timely manner. Data preparation, transforming and enriching your data, is also very important to get data in the form your organization needs. There's a good example with Claris Connect, where you can get some basics of a contact, such as a phone number or a name, and send it to a digital enrichment service that will fill in the missing data points for you so you have the data that your organization needs. And then data extraction. It's important to be able to extract data and FileMaker has many ways to do this. Some data sources or systems are difficult to extract for. For example, COBOL uh, systems are difficult to extract from and it's been around forever. These are a few of the ways that are crucial for getting your data in order. Now to talk about cleaning data, it's useful to think about what dirty data is. It's any one of these things that affects the accuracy of your insights, actions, and automation. Now just think about how often paper-based or physical information is dirty by this definition. But digital data can still have multiple types of problems and these are listed here. Now one caveat is anomalies. You may have missing values or outliers or rare labels of a category that aren't really noise in the data. They might represent something that needs critical examination. They might really be valid or they might be useful for comprehending the data. Sometimes you need to bring in a domain expert, whether it's in that particular type of business or health area or financial service to uh, look at the data and decide what is what I call healthy dirt or data anomalies or whether it needs to be cleaned. For example, in this screenshot of an, of an address, the address line two, having that empty is perfectly valid. The state being empty, empty is not valid, and so that needs to be cleaned or fixed. Besides anomalies, we also need to discuss situation where the data coming in may look clean, but it's not correct. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. So what if the measuring devices aren't working right, or there's confounding factors not being measured, or the data's hacked, or, you know, just like other things in the news, 
the biases, the sampling, you could be sampling not everybody for particular reasons, or you could have some cultural or cognitive biases that come in in various ways via uh, customer phone calls or confirmation bias. So we need to clean the data. And cleaning the data is much easier in a digital world, and FileMaker also has a lot of tools for this task. But here's the other thing. Although this might not seem like so much fun validating and cleaning data, it's going to reduce errors in your business. Unlike your paper-based processes, getting the data digitally helps you digitally transform and operate your business better via this validation and cleaning task. These are some various ways that FileMaker can help with cleaning and validation scripts, calculations, the validation field, custom functions as in Ray Colligan's trim function here. And you could also use some third party tools if you were so inclined. I had urge you to check out Molly Connolly's data cleansing talk or Tim Newdecker's 2017 calculation functions talks for some details on some of these tools and how they can help you clean your data. Now the third area of data strategy is data gui guidance for these different reasons, availability, usability, consistency, data, data integrity. You need data you can trust. And so these are based on things like internal data standards and policies. For example, in the security area, a finance VP would be the owner of the finance data and they would provide the pertinent people access to that data. You also might be under compliance laws such as GDPR or HIPAA, and that's part of data governance. So a useful way to think about this data strategy is that the data management, the central accessible and clean is part of an IT practice and the governance is a business strategy. And so that can help you with getting your data in order to divide up these tasks. So we talked about what data digital transformation is and how to get data in order. The next module will talk about how to get insights, actions, and automations from your data. So you have your data in order and you're ready to use that data to further transform your organization. What does that look like? Well, first let's talk about data in different types of data. And we have a definition of data here. Now you have raw data, such as contact details for customers. And then you might have some metadata, date the record was created and the user that created it. And then you might have some derived data, knowledge discovery, data mining. I have 30 active customers in the travel industry with past due invoices totaling $23,000. That's pretty important to know. Now I can get to some analytics. If I give a 5% discount for payments within five days, what happens? The data shows my past due invoices drop by 20%. That's pretty useful. Then we can use some machine learning and AI to get some data, like predicting the 10 customers with the highest balances that will most likely have overdue invoices next month, and we can try to take some actions to get those invoices paid. Let's also talk about some overarching data and digital transformation terms. Business intelligence or BI and data science are probably terms you've heard, and you can see the different categories in the images here. A useful way to think about them is that business intelligence is usually backward looking and data science is usually forward looking. Other terms are data mining, and data mining is a misnomer. It's not really mining, it's uncovering patterns and groupings. And then data analytics, test hypotheses or questions like we showed in the last slide. And then data visualization can be anything, any kind of view you want to see, such as KPIs, patterns, reporting, analytics, anything that helps your organization operate better. Check out Luke Rochester's sessions in 2015 and 2018, which stack up FileMaker and business intelligence with regard to the different levels and tools. So this is a diagram from Gartner that helps to understand the different levels of analytics. And the X axis represents difficulty, and then the escalator goes up in hindsight, descriptive analytics, what happened, diagnostic analytics, why did it happen, insight, and then getting into foresight, what will happen, predictive analytics, and then prescriptive analytics, how can we make it happen? 
So an example of this would be predictive maintenance. You could just look at descriptive analytics, what happened or why did it happen? But you could get into predicting when, you know, when will this maintenance be needed? And then you can prescript how can we make it happen? How can we keep downtime to a mi minimum? We can prescript uh, some actions to take, some maintenance to take, so that we keep our uh, machines operating optimally. Now, Ventana Research found that when machine learning and AI are delivered alongside analytics, it delivers better value and ease of use for people. And these top levels, predictive and prescriptive, can be done with machine learning and AI. Now, this is a useful diagram for basic understanding of analytics, but I want to point out that the value on the y-axis is not necessarily black and white. You might get a ton of value from some descriptive analytics about aging, uh, and invoices way more than you might get for predictive analytics. It really depends on your business use case or organization's use case. This escalator also doesn't mean you need to do one of them before the other. So I think a better way to look at this is complexity and cost on the y-axis. So let's look at a scenario. And I'm using a fun example here, but I want you to think about a problem in you or your client's business or organization. You have data and operations, and you want to see what it's producing and what you can optimize, whether that's customers, maintenance uptime, dollars, etc. Usually you want to maximize things like sales or customers and minimize things like defects or complaints. So this example is a pretty positive example from 2020 where these two astronauts went up to the International Space Station and they need to record their, their food that they eat and what it produces health-wise because it's pretty important for them to stay healthy when they're up in space. So we can look at some analytics. We can say, well, they, they ate X and it produced Y results. And then we could look at some diagnostic analytics, like what factor in Z, what factor Z in what they ate caused a particular result. We can also look at, well, if they continue with this factor Z and X, you know, if they, we continue feeding them that, what will happen with Y, the results? And then we can do things like, say they have a particularly heavy cognitive or physical task one day. How can we adjust that factor Z to an amount that gets the optimal result for a cognitive or physical task? And we could use machine learning to model the optimal diet for particular tasks. Now think about a business or organization example, you know, asking what happened, why happened, what will happen, how can we make something happen? Think about how having this data at your fingertips can help you not just digitally transform, but organizationally optimize and work in the best way. Now you can build your own analytic tools in FileMaker, but the practice these days is often to integrate with tools that do these things already well versus bake all tools into a platform. And there are a lot of tools available to integrate with FileMaker or to use in conjunction with Claire's Connect. If you do a quick Google search, there are tools specific to your domain or vertical industry organization and your problem that can integrate with FileMaker so that you can enable insights, operations, and actions and automation for a better run organization customer experience. So in this module, we talked about how data can help with insights and operations and actions in your organization. In the next module, we'll talk about automation and digital transformation. So we've talked about data for operations and insights and actions. Now let's talk specifically about automation and digital transformation. When we think of the history of automation, we often think of the first assembly line, the Ford Motor Assembly Line, built back in 1913 in Michigan, where I live. However, that's actually not the first assembly line. It's in Venice, back in the 1300s, to produce ships, where I was last year. Assembly lines are not constructed to produce one of something. They're made to codify best practices and consistency and efficiency across an organization. Like assembly lines, automation enables you to operate at scale. And automation is like creating a digital assembly line. That's what you're ideally doing in your digital transformation. 
The goals are to reduce efforts, improve outcomes, and have accuracy. So if we look at the definition of automation, it's basically a process to reduce human intervention. And if you Google automation, you'll see a lot of different terms in business, intelligent process automation, machine learning automation, digital process automation, robotic process automation. One way to look at these different types is to boil them down to these four flavors. Basic automation. It might be surprising, but centralizing and syncing info like FileMaker does is a form of automation. Basic automation helps the simple jobs in your organization, giving a centralized place to store all related information. Process automation enables you to code and transform your business processes for task consistency, error reduction, and transparency. It's more powerful than basic automation and is controlled by your software. Integration automation is more complex than process automation and enables you to code the way humans perform tasks within a workflow and repeat those actions automatically. You can integrate with other APIs or software like e-commerce. For example, you can trigger via a Shopify order, and when the Shopify order comes in, it's automatically downloaded to FileMaker. Humans must define these rules, however. When you get to machine learning or AI automation, the software enables the decision making. making. The software makes decisions on what to do based on the data from what it's learned and constantly analyzed previously. For example, in manufacturing, AI automation can significantly reduce supply chain forecasting errors. We can also look at automation along a continuum with slightly different terms here. We start along the axis with doing and then move into thinking. So doing with basic and processor integration automation versus AI automation thinking, and then along the y-axis with complexity and cost. Now, when you look at implementing machine learning or AI or even robotic process automation, look at the return on investment versus the cost, but also look at the customer experience and whether that has intangible benefits that might drive more satisfaction or more referrals for your business. You can also look at the inefficiency of each of each task and what that's costing you and then multiply by the frequency it occurs. You can also then also look at lost opportunity costs for each of those inefficiencies and the frequency they occur and where that time could be used in other productive activities. Now that's the plus side of automation. Let's look at what you need to be careful of. We've all seen automation go wrong in a vending machine, whether we didn't get a snack at all or we got five free snacks. Now, when it goes wrong in digital automation, it can cost your business, whether that's free goods for the consumers or extra work on your, auto on your operations. Also remember that you need to watch for changes in data that can affect automation. Maybe your credit card authorization changes and it's not authorizing correctly and you're shipping out free packages that haven't been paid for. Ideally, you use one of these means to capture any issues, human oversight, logging, email alerts, and then you correct them and continue to refine the automation process to reduce efforts, improve outcomes, and have accuracy. The result of that is, is that you'll have more employee productivity and satisfaction and more customer satisfaction. So in this module, we talked about automation and the different types and the way to look at the different types. In the next module, we'll show some scenarios and how FileMaker and Claris Connect fit in. So in the last module, we talked about different types of automation and things to be careful of. And in this module, we'll talk about automation and scenarios of the different levels of automation. So back to our astronauts data in and data out. Note that there are barcodes on their food so they can easily capture and automatically store the data from the food they eat. A curious item in this picture is how they have scissors as a manual utensil to open their shrink wrapped food. You can't automate that. Now think about your business example where you might need some automations for your data capture or data or processes in your workflow. And just a reminder of our escalator. We'll start by looking at basic and process automation, 
And also note that integration automation and process automation bleed together here, and integration automation is also part of robotic process automation, and we'll talk about the definition of RPA. So for basic automation and storing the data for the food and vitals, we talked a lot about the tools that FileMaker has when we talked about getting your data in order in terms of it being central and accessible and clean. And then when we get to process and integration automation, you can implement things like inventory replenishment automation for their food items or vitals alerts for issues with any of their health. Note that data triggers these automations and alerts. FileMaker has a lot of different tools to make process and integration automation happen. You can trigger scripts, you can run scripts on server, you can schedule scripts. You can use timers for to run tasks at specific time intervals. You can also integrate with APIs for actions and automations. Last year I, at DevCon, I showed an example where I trained a model to automatically classify parts via an API integration with a tool called MonkeyLearn. Check out that DevCon talk. So further on up the scale, robotic process automation, and there's a definition here across the, uh, the realm of robotic process automation, which is also a continuum. There's different levels of robotic process automation and imitating the behavior of a, of a human. But the requirements are a trigger, which is data, inputs and outputs, which is data, and then sufficient volume for your cost effectiveness. So an example of this within Claris Connect is you have a trigger, an image pushed into Dropbox, and then you share that link to FileMaker, and then you push it out to uh, Slack and Twilio. And so the astronauts do this with images of their onboard health scans. And then people that are subscribed via MailChimp get that information of their contacts saved and they're automatically subscribed to Slack and Twilio and then they receive any of these images that are pushed via their Slack or Twilio alerts. Now when you move up to machine learning or AI, that is simulating human intelligence versus human actions and that's the difference between robotic process automation and AI. So an example of that within Claris Connect would be that the image is pushed to Dropbox, and this would be another flow, and then that image uses some categorization AI and some diagnostics AI to determine the health of that image. For In, in this example, that would be a chest x-ray. Now, there are a lot of tools available to integrate with FileMaker or to work in conjunction with Claris Connect. And you can look at also look at the past DevCon talks to see some other integrations with image categorization and um, sentiment analysis. So in this module, we talked about automation and some different scenarios. In the next module, we'll summarize where and how to use your data and automation to digitally transform. So we talked about what digital transformation is, what you should and can do with your data to digitally transform, and the ways you can automate. Now let's generally summarize where and how to use data and automation to digitally transform. So where for data? Well, operationally, keeping track of anything and understanding what happened, why it happened, what will happen, how to make it happen, and then acting on those data insights and deciding based on data. According to Gartner, by 2022, 90% of corporate strategies will explicitly mention information or data as a critical enterprise asset and analytics as an essential competency. So where for automation? Well, if the goal is to reduce effort, improve outcomes and accuracy, then the where is where things are time consuming, error prone. And for accuracy, you need to make sure you're automating on good data. And for machine learning, it would be where you're making a decision and the decision matters. Remember, the payoff is higher when the scale is higher, 10 versus 1,000 orders, and then it helps reduce repetitiveness and mundane work for workers. So here are some examples of how to use automation to digitally transform. 
and they're across the operational and customer experience. And a quick Google search of any of your inefficient business processes can yield some solution and automation examples. So how to go about transforming? Well, don't try to fit the proverbial square peg into a round hole. Your business case is a problem that may or not, may not be solved by a specific solution. So look at the business case scenario and the return on investment or intrinsic value and see what the best solution actually is. So how to think about this for data, how you get data, how you consume data and the impacts, what change patterns might occur. A good example within the COVID pandemic is the extreme changes in up or down demand patterns for specific areas. Another way you need to think about data is the management and governance is really along a continuum and specific to your business, the data that you need, the quality of the data you need, and the rules you're under for your organization. How to think about automation and making it happen. Map your business workflow, break things down into small discrete tasks, get some early wins, some easy wins, and take it one at a time and monitor. For specific tasks, look for off-the-shelf software to integrate. And likewise with machine learning, look for off-the-shelf software to integrate with FileMaker or Claire's Connect or use Core ML with already built models. Only if there are no off-the-shelf tools or models that fit your case, train a tool with data and verify that the results provide value for your business. Then manage over time so they perform well. In this way, you can piece together efficient business process that improve outcomes and improve accuracy as needed by your business use case. And this will help you digitally transform in one or all of these areas to improve operations, enhance customer experience, and enable new business models. Data and automation are the keys to digital transformation.